with multiple rumored returns to WWE and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching The Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. On his podcast, Kurt Angle was asked who he thinks is the most underrated star on the current WWE roster as he said, Bobby Roode is the most underrated wrestler. There. They are not doing right by Bobby. He is so talented. He, I have to say, for me working with, you know, I've worked with thousands of talent. Bobby is in my top 10. Definitely is in my top 10. With Raw opening up with members of DX given it was their 25th anniversary, former WWE referee Jimmy Corderas criticized this in a video. If I've said it once, I've said it I don't know how many times. How you start the show is just as important as how you end it. And I think there was a missed opportunity last night at Raw. Hello everyone, former sports entertainment referee Jimmy Corderas with your Ref and Rant for today. You can get your Ref and Rant t-shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com. Unless you want it in video form, hit me up on Cameo and get it there. Look. Uh, it, it was a fun opening segment with DX in the gorilla position and, and Hunter and the interaction going on there. Fun, very entertaining. And then in front of the live audience, the bloodline taking their time, great entrance, just you know, tremendous heat from these guys, fans loving it, fans were into it. And it was a great segment, Sami Zayn, awesome. But on Saturday night, they ended the show in a banger with reintroducing Bray Wyatt, I thought, this is the way they could have opened the show. Yes, I know it's 25th anniversary of DX and all that going on, but I think it was a huge opportunity to start the show off with a real kick-ass moment with Bray Wyatt. That's all. on the DDP Snake Pit podcast about Rick Rude leaving the NWA to join the WWF while being an NWA Tag Team Champion, Jake Roberts would add that Bret Hart deserved the Montreal Screwjob. I don't agree with leaving as champion at all. You know, there's been so many guys who get away with it too, holding up promoters because they don't want to lose the title in a certain area. Maybe Canada? Has that ever happened? Oh wait, it did. Sean and Bret. He didn't want to drop it in Canada, so Vince McMahon and others screwed him. You didn't get screwed, a-hole. You got what you deserved. How do you have the right not to drop that title? That title, that was given to you. You did not beat up anybody to get that. The reason you have that title is because some other schmuck was a good enough guy to lose to you, The Undertaker at SummerSlam 1997. So, you not dropping that title tells me you don't give a damn about anybody else but yourself. And that's very selfish. It's wrong, and if you were contemplating doing it, that's for you. When talking about the challenges Tony Khan is facing as CEO of AEW, Swerve Strickland pointed out on Say Less with Kaz, if he is in over his head, if he is, this is speculation on my part. If he is in over his head, good, because he has to be challenged that way. He needs to. He knows he needs to. You don't do a million dollar gate on a Wednesday night at Arthur Ashe without challenges. You think that's easy? No. He should be going after these challenges. He should be dealing with locker room morale, and this person wants this, this person wants this, and there's friction and things like that. He has to go through that. If he doesn't, how do we grow? We have to go through growing pains. I don't understand how people think that's just an AEW thing. Vince McMahon has fought people. We've seen these things. That was 20 years in. They almost went bankrupt like how many times? AEW has to face these challenges because they have to grow and evolve. You don't grow and evolve without building Kevlar. Following his departure from WWE, Karrion Cross would grow out his hair, which he has kept since returning. He addressed the reason for this while speaking to the Ring of Wrestling show. I'd gotten a role to do a film. For the character that they wanted me to play, they asked me if I can grow my hair on them. Like, well, if you're paying me, yes. I will grow my hair out, and then the film kept getting pushed back and back. I was like, you know what? It might not even happen, but I kind of like having my hair. Again, it was kind of unexpected. It's a lot of maintenance that I don't really care for, but it's kind of nice to have it. I haven't had a full head of hair maybe in 10 years. Maybe six or eight. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but it feels like it's been a lifetime.
Talking about the upcoming season for Dark Side of the Ring, WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley noted how he was contacted to be involved. I just thought, man, there's going to be a lot of depth on this show. I didn't realize you were going to have some episodes that weren't just, that weren't dark by nature, like the Brawl for All, the trip to North Korea, and things like that. It's gone on to be such a great show. I look back and think, man, not only was it a lot of money for a fairly easy job, but it would have been a really great show. So I've been really happy with my appearances on Dark Side of the Ring, where I talk about Tommy Billington, or Luna, and they've asked me about my availability for a couple in the upcoming season. On his 83 Weeks podcast, former WCW president Eric Bischoff spoke about talent today being frustrated with a lack of TV time as he said, be ready for your opportunity. Injuries are a thing. Contract issues are a thing. HR issues are a thing. Just because you're at the bottom of the card, you're not getting as much television time as you think you deserve. Keep your nose to the grindstone. You're getting paid good money and you're not on the road 300 days a year. I don't have sympathy for talent who are frustrated. How many people in the world would do anything to change places with you? And guess what? It wouldn't be complete complaining about how much TV time they're not getting. The Undertaker and Michelle McCool recently took part in the Tortilla Challenge, where you slap someone in the face with a tortilla while their mouth is filled with water. Here's the video. <laughs> With it reported previously that WWE star Aaliyah was suffering from injuries, she has taken to Instagram to confirm this as she wrote, It's been a month, so here I go straight from the horse's mouth. I have to say my last match was probably one of my favorites. And I would like to thank my tag partner Raquel and Damage Control and everyone involved. Yes, I got injured mid-match. However, I have this overwhelming gratitude towards the incident because I felt like it pulled out a version of me that I never even knew existed. Keep going. I remember thinking, I never get opportunities like this one. Another voice in my head screamed. So I don't care. I'm going to keep going and keep showing out. The emotions and energy I was feeling in the moment truly lit me up inside and I felt indestructible in that moment. Yes, with an elevated first rib and AC sprain and all. I am very grateful to get to do what I do and hope my passion and efforts transcended through your television screen. I don't know what the future holds or when I'll be back, but I just want to say thank you for everyone that has reached out. I really can't wait to get back in the ring. Talking to Sam Roberts, AEW star MJF spoke about Sami Zayn's involvement with the Bloodline on SmackDown where he heaped praise on the star, saying, I think Sami Zayn is one of the most entertaining professional wrestlers on the planet and has been for a very long time. He hasn't always had the platform and the opportunity to show the world that. I feel now that he's getting that platform, it's becoming more clear than it ever was that he's next level. During that same interview, MJF touched on Chris Jericho saying that he will end up being a huge babyface due to him being away from programming as he said, I think I'm a great guy. I think I'm salt to the earth. Are you kidding me? So I totally agree with Chris. Who doesn't love me? And that's the thing, like I said, you'll find the biggest stars in our industry today are all going through the exact same thing. This is just true. When it came through the curtain, when Roman comes through the curtain, this is a good example. You will hear the crowd and it's deafening. There's cheers going on and there's booze going on, but the most important thing is it is the loudest it will be all night. Now, I do feel that there will come a time in my career where I will lean into the cheering. I don't know. What I do know is what I care about the most, and that is money. I'm not changing a damn thing. As Brock Lesnar made a shocking return on Raw last night and decimated Bobby Lashley, the Wrestling Observer noted some details behind this, saying they're probably going to be wrestling at Crown Jewel. Brock Lesnar comes back for Saudi Arabia, so it made sense. The story there is that the first match they had, Bobby Lashley won, even though there was a lot of interference. So, Brock does kind of have, he can go to get his win back and Lashley is no longer US champion, Seth Rollins is, so Brock doesn't have to win a championship. It looks like Logan Paul and Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley is maybe the top two matches on Crown Jewel.
When it comes to a star WWE could be looking to bring into the company, it was said on Wrestling Observer Radio that, I know WWE has an interest in Taven. I would think that also Taven, Bennett, and Maria could go to New Japan Pro Wrestling because they have a history there. I don't know about AEW, but if there's something going on at Ring of Honor, they could go there because they were Ring of Honor people. They may all, Maria was trying to start her own women's wrestling company. Speaking of stars, WWE could be interested in Dave Meltzer would note that the former Bronson Reed, Jonah, could be on the company's radar. When Okada vs. Jonah was over, they did a handshake, and I don't know, they didn't talk finale, and they didn't say he was leaving, but kind of the way that handshake, WWE's gone after Jonah, and they want him. And even though Jonah was getting a great push here, this was actually the first pinfall loss he's taken in New Japan. The handshake was kind of weird, it was almost like you think maybe he's going back to WWE, but I don't know if that's the case or not. With Mia Yim just recently finishing up her run in Impact Wrestling, it was also said that she could be returning as well. Mia Yim, obviously her husband is in AEW, Keith Lee. Paul Levesque is trying to get everybody back that he had before in NXT that got fired when he didn't have power, and she would fit into that category. With a report that Soraya, formerly known as Paige in WWE, has been cleared to wrestle in AEW, Jim Cornette had this to say about it on his podcast. How is that possible that if she was able to be cleared medically, that WWE wouldn't have cleared her medically specifically while she was under contract to them and they were paying her? Maybe WWE said, well, she can't get cleared medically to our standards, so maybe she should go somewhere where the standards are lower. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.